Hi, welcome to Awkward Amster. Today, I'll be checking out this digital wireless backup camera. Brand name is TX. It's got a five inch monitor wireless backup camera. And I think I saw someplace that I said that it can also hook up to two camera units. The one I got here, this is just a single camera. I'm gonna show some pages from the user manual. If you wanna read any part in more detail, feel free to pause the video. The screen is not waterproof, but the camera is IP68 rated. This is exactly what I'll be doing. I only want the camera to turn on when I'm reversing, so I'm just gonna hook mine to the reverse lights. And these are just installation instructions. How to operate the unit. Pairing. This part's important if I could get a second camera. Here's the monitor. Let me put this to the side first. This will be the cigarette power port to the monitor. This is the camera itself. This is also the mount for the monitor. license plate bracket if I wanted to use it. This is the power for the camera unit. Some adhesives there. The antenna I believe. And here are some T-clips. Wire taps. These makes installation so much easier. The camera just draws five volts. So I think there's a transformer either here or built into this wire. And the adhesive goes on here, front, back. That way I'll place, I'll adhere this to the car and then the license plate to this. This part can be adjusted. Looks like I can angle it pretty low too. Then when I get the angle I want, now there's a uh, washer right here. I'll just tighten this this one right here. This one's a little bit looser than this one. For the cigarette power port, this is the one that's for the monitor. It puts at 12 to 24 volts. Now it puts at five volt, 2.4 amps. And what caught my eye was there was a USB port there. So even if this is even though this is going to consume a cigarette power port. I can still plug my USB cable in here, charge my smartphone, my tablet if I wanted. I'm going to need to trim some more of the insulation off the wire. Just this part that's exposed is just too short for me to work with. I'll take off maybe a mm, quarter of an inch at least, quarter to half an inch. And you can use a wire, wire cutter tool if you have it, or just use a scissor. With the T-clips, everything's attached but I still twist tied it up here just for added measure. I'll put like electric tape around here. And what I'm doing is I'm going to tap it into my reverse lights, the wire that went to my reverse light. So that way, every time I put the car in reverse, the camera will have power running to it. I think ideally the camera will be at the license plate level, but it doesn't have to be. If it needs to be at the license plate level, then I need to run the wires all the way through the top over here. Another advice I share from past experiences, before securing it to a certain location, or test it. Make sure that the power is successful. The car does not need to be running, it just needs to be in the on. Pull out the handbrake. Put the car in reverse. Make sure power is running to it. Which looks pretty clear. All right.
now I can move the camera to where I want, knowing that the power cable, the power situation is all taken care of. And once I mount it to where I want it, then test the power again. I'm going to put the car in reverse. Now, when it's not well lit, can't really see the symbols. I just, just got to press it. Starting from the left, this is the lines. Then the second one from the left, this changes the orientation of the image. The next is the plus, minus, and the menu. Enter the menu system. Is I can use plus or minus to adjust the brightness. That's brightness. I think this is a like contrast. And back the, back again. Notice that on the bottom, it has a little Wi-Fi signal. So my car is not that long. This is a Honda Accord. If I had like a, a truck, for example, this would be very important. But it's good to see that it's still got full signal strength. Earlier, that little knob antenna I mentioned, I already screwed that on. I'm not using a suction mount, I'm just using another mount that I had for like smartphones. I'm about one car length. It doesn't really show up here. And the way I like to mount the camera, or the way I like to angle the camera, is I like to see a little bit of a bumper. Backing up the vehicle. So this is, I'm not sure how, four feet maybe. Then as I reach to this point, the middle of the yellow, stop here. Should be about two feet. Yep. It's dark. I'm gonna put my car in reverse to engage the parking camera. On this display itself, most of the item is like I'll say grayscale, except for the guidelines. I still see clearly see red, yellow, green. On my iPhone, which I'm using to record this, it may not come out as red, yellow, green. But keep in mind that when the car is in reverse, what's shining behind me is the reverse lights. So it does function very well in low lux. This is a definitely very neat, very handy camera for us that have cars that either uses a sensor or the older model car cars that don't even have sensors, don't even have cameras, such as my car. The field of view is okay. I actually don't mind wider field of view. It's not like I'm trying to shoot a video with this for YouTube purposes. It's not like a dash cam. It's just for parking. So even if it was a wider field of view and it's distorted, I guess I can see the complete left, complete right. For example, like my Honda's, my Honda CRV, they offer normal view or wide angle view. That way, if someone approaches from my blind, my blind spot, I can still see them. It has guided lines, still wireless, allows me to adjust the orientation, much brighter than what it was in the past. Installation was very simple with the, with the provided clips. And at 75 bucks for this unit, after a clipped Amazon coupon, I think it's well worth it. I'll place a link to this in the description below. If you guys have any questions, comments, suggestions, feel free to contact me. Bye.